All right, good afternoon, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'd like to thank all of you for coming here today. Now I'm going to hand over the floor to my colleague, Dr. Medero. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, like Daniel said, this is a conclusion. This is a summary of everything that we have done from the very first presentation. We have talked about many things. We have talked about fat diets. We have talked about whether we should eat meat or not eat meat. We've talked about fats and carbohydrates and veggies and everything. So basically what I'm going to talk about here today is all of the different nutrients and what they do for us. And then we are going to switch over to weight control and also on fitness. And Daniel will take over and talk about the wellness center, the new wellness center that we're having. So that's very, very exciting news for all of us. So we start out with, you know, the essential nutrients. And so when you're talking about food, you have to understand that food is equivalent to carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. That's what it's all about, okay? And then those three are the ones that are going to give you calories. So calories, carbohydrates, fats, proteins. Then you're talking about vitamins and minerals and water. Vitamins and minerals no calories. So whenever you hear I'm taking vitamins and they're making me fat, that's not true. The vitamins are not making you fat. What you're eating is what's making you gain weight. Okay, so it's not the vitamin supplement, it's not the mineral supplements, none of that. So make sure you put the blame in the right place. Okay, so you have your macro, meaning you have to eat lots of it, and that would be, again, your fat, your protein, and your carbohydrates. And then you have your micro, which means you only consume milligrams or micrograms, and that's your vitamins and minerals. How should we get the vitamins and minerals? From the macronutrients, from the fats, the proteins, and the carbohydrates. So then you get what we really want to know about the calories. The calories that you get are four calories per gram of carbohydrates and proteins. That's very important. For every gram that you consume, and that's what you see in food labels, you will see your calories and then you will say, fat, proteins, carbohydrates, so many grams. Okay, so if you got 20 grams of fat, it's completely different than if you get 20 grams of carbohydrates because 20 grams of carbohydrates, you multiply times four and it gives you 80. And 20 grams of protein, you multiply times four and it gives you 80. But then when you talk about the fats, then those 20 grams, you don't multiply times four. You multiply times nine, which is double the amount. And if we like to have a little liquor or wine, as we see here, uh, alcohol is a type of carbohydrate, and that gives you seven calories. So anytime that you are into weight control, one of the first things that anyone who knows nutrition is going to say either less alcohol or no alcohol, okay? That's why it's known the beer belly, okay? Why? Because that alcohol has a lot of calories, all right? So we move on with, okay, so what is the use of all these carbohydrates, fats, and proteins? The carbohydrates are energy. You eat an apple, you need to go run, go walk, go up, and down the stairs, it's energy. The first thing that the body uses is the carbohydrates, okay? Whatever it is that you get for breakfast, by dinner, it should be used already, basically, okay? So those are your carbohydrates, glucose, sugar. Then you go to the fats, and the fats are needed. For example, you have four vitamins, A, D, E, K, you need fat for that, okay, to be absorbed. You also need fat for cushion, you need fat for insulation. So we need to have a specific amount of fat in our bodies. But what is the percentage of fat that we should have? About 16 to 21, I would say. If you happen to be a female, if you're a male, 12 to 16, okay? If you're over 25% and you're a male, you're already considered obese. If you're a female, over 30% of fat, you're already considered obese. So we really have to keep the fat percentage in check. And for anyone who's interested, if you want to know your percentage of fat, 
or if you want to know your waist circumference, you can go to the wellness center, the one that we have now, and we can do that for you. We can also do the BMI for you, and we can also tell you what you need to do about it, if anything needs to be done. But you have to be brave and strong if you want to find out your percentage of body fat. Because a lot of people get depressed. Okay? So even if you're thin, you can go and find out that your percentage of body fat is not what you thought it was. Okay? So you got to be strong. All right, so then we go to the vitamins and minerals. They don't give you any calories, no calories. Water, no calories. You have to drink lots and lots and lots of water. Six glasses of water, eight glasses of water a day, you're going to be fine. You're not going to suffer from too much water, hardly ever, okay, would you suffer from drinking too much water. Water, no calories. Unless you get those different types of water that they have you know, fruit flavor and this and that. But plain water, what you have in front of you, is excellent for your kidneys, it's excellent for your skin, it's excellent for your body. The vitamins and minerals are good because they help speed up reactions, like vitamin B is very important, it's a coenzyme, okay? You need all of the minerals because you need the iron for your blood and you need the calcium for your bones, et cetera, et cetera. We know that, okay? So when you're talking about water, you need the water because anything that happens inside and outside of the cells of the body, they need water. Every time you go to the bathroom, water. Every time that you need a lubricant for your eyes, for your body, for any part of your body, for your intestines, water, okay? So water is so much needed because we're about 65, 70%, depends on what source you listen to but we are more than two thirds of our bodies is water, okay? So it's very important that we consume lots of it. Okay, so how much should we consume? Well, according to, okay, your uh, diet guidelines, according to the dietary recommended intake of, again, all of the different health uh, governmental agencies, you're supposed to consume about 55, 65% of carbohydrates, but it is not the carbohydrates of the sugar. It is not the soda, it is not the pies, the cakes, it's none of that, okay? It is the greens, it's the grains, it's the veggies. Those are the carbohydrates we should consume. It's not the potato, it's not the white rice, it's not the pasta, it's not the french fries, okay? It is what they sell in the produce department. It is all those different types of the beets and the lettuce and the arugula, all of those. Those are the types of vegetables that you can have lots of them. And unless you put a lot of dressing on it, they're very good for you. So that's why you're supposed to consume 55 to uh, 65%. The more, the better, as long as you're using them. That's the way it works. If you eat a pancake in the morning, and then you go and you exercise or you go about your day, by the evening, that pancake should be gone, okay? If you eat carrots, if you eat rice, that's perfectly fine because you use it throughout the day. The problem is when you ate so much of the carbohydrates, you had the potato and the rice and you had, you know, the sweet potato and all of the different carbohydrates and then at the end of the day, you haven't used them. So again, based on the lectures that we've given before, if you don't use your carbohydrates, what do they turn into? Fat, okay? If you don't use the piece of steak, your protein, and you eat, instead of four ounces, you eat eight ounces, and your body uses it for all of the different things that protein is needed for, for all of the immune system, for building, for repairing, protein is absolutely wonderful, but you don't need so much you don't use it, the next day you're gonna store it as fat, okay? So that's why you're supposed to consume more carbohydrates. If you look at the numbers, less fat. Why less fat? Because fat is supposed to be just in case we go into a famine, okay? Like we don't eat for the next five days, so we're supposed to be using that little fat that we have. That's the reason for it. But I don't think we're gonna go into a famine anytime soon. So we really don't need to consume so much. And then you see the protein even less. 
because we don't need to build and repair our muscles every day, okay, and our hair and our cells because they usually take two to three months in order for them to, you know, replenish all of the different cells. So we don't have to consume so much protein. That's why if you look at that, a little protein, a little fat, a lot of carbohydrates, but not bad carbohydrates, good carbohydrates. The greens, the salads, the veggies, that's the whole point. Now you look at the dietary guidelines for 2010. This is what we got for 2010. We, had, um, we have a, a, a government report that's called Healthy People. Healthy People 2010. We had Healthy People 2000. Now we have Healthy People 2020. But who's reading it and who's following it? That is the problem with all of these governmental uh, reports that come out and says, oh, all Americans, instead of engaging in 20 minutes of exercise, we should do 30 minutes of exercise. And then that goes from 2010 to 2020. Oh, no. Now we should be doing 45 minutes of exercise instead of 30 minutes. I don't care what they write. We are not doing it. So that is the problem with all these guidelines. That's the problem with all of this beautiful stuff that they write. But the American public needs to do that. We need to do that. Otherwise, this is just going down the drain. So you have uh, control of calorie intake. You're supposed to increase the amount of physical activity. You're supposed to consume less alcohol, have more potassium, vitamin D, calcium, et cetera, et cetera. But that's all fine and dandy if we do it, okay? You continue on with, okay, we need to reduce the sodium. There's three things that you need to remember whenever you're going to eat. F, S, S. What is F, S, S? Less fat, less sugar, less salt. If we do that, what are we avoiding? High blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, overweight. Just by reducing fat, sodium, and sugar. Those are three killers right there. And sugar is a carbohydrate, but it is the bad carbohydrate. The pies, the cakes, the cookies, the sodas. So don't get it confused with the arugula and the green peppers. It's another different thing. Okay, so more vegetables, more fruits, more whole grains. You're going to buy some type of cereal. Cereal can be wonderful for you, okay, as in total, as in some of the cashies. You still have to read labels because some of these supposedly good ones have like 15 grams, okay? If you go and you get Special K, the, the one with no blueberries and no strawberries, has four Grams of sugar, beautiful. That's what you want to get. Oh, but I like chocolate. So you get the Cocoa Puffs. You get the Cocoa Puffs that are all sugar. And you put your cup of Special K and a tablespoon of Cocoa Puffs. And then you say, I'm eating my chocolate. It gives you chocolate flavor. It gives you a little sugar, but it is not all sugar and chocolate, which is going to destroy your teeth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to, you know, play it along, okay, and try to balance it out. So this is the way the plate is supposed to look. We've shown you this before. Daniel brought a plate, and it had all of the different compartments. And if you look at that, you will see that three-fourths is all plant. The plant from the grains, the plant from the fruits, the plant from the vegetables is all plants, carbohydrates. You see, that's where we get the whole thing. Then you have the protein. And again, the protein should be what fits in here. A protein, it is not. In fact, think of this. This would be perfect. You look at this with this thin. This is your steak. This is your fish. This is your chicken. This is beautiful. This is what we should consume, okay? Dairy, oh, but I'm, I'm lactose intolerant. You know, okay, so go for the rice milk, the almond milk, the soy milk. There are so many different types of milk that have calcium 
and you have no lactose intolerance, okay? So there is always some other choice that is the correct choice, okay? So what is it that's happening in the United States that we all know about? Too much sodium, too much saturated fat. What is saturated fat? The ones that comes from animals. Animal fat is called saturated fat. There is also two plants, okay, that are having saturated fat. Very thick, very bad, it gets stuck in your arteries. And that would be coconut oil, okay, the fat from coconut, and also your palm, palm kernel oil. Those two are just as bad as a piece of bacon. So be very careful when you're cooking, especially if you're from the islands and you use a lot of coconut. Very careful. Saturated fat as bad as a piece of meat. So we consume too much of that, and we do not consume enough of the vitamin E, okay, which you can get from your sunflowers. You get a bunch of sunflowers and you pop them in your mouth, you're getting a lot of vitamin E. Almonds are excellent, vitamin E and calcium, okay? Uh, fiber, anything that's whole wheat, whole grains, that's what you want to do. The bread, okay, the cereals, bran, that's what you need to consume. If you think you're eating like a horse, you're not, okay? This is very good for you to go to the bathroom every day, which is very, very important, okay? So high fiber. So now, these are the leading causes of death, leading causes of death in the United States because of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity. Number one, heart disease. More than 500,000 people every year do not make it to the emergency room. Half a million people die every year from heart disease, from a heart attack that they do not survive, okay? Then you have, of course, stroke, which is another cardiovascular disease, but it is in reference to your brain. It's related to your brain. And cancer, which we all know about, lung cancer, colon cancer, for women, breast cancer, and for men, prostate. And ty type 2 diabetes, which is the one that we get when we eat all of the wrong food. It's not the one we're born with or we get when we're young. It's the one that we acquire as we eat too much fat and we eat too much sugar. Okay? So now I'm going to pass on the presentation to Daniel, and he's going to continue talking about weight control and about fitness. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Medero. All right. That was some wonderful information that Dr. Medero uh, presented. But now we're going to talk about um, weight management, basically, and physical fitness. We've noticed that a, a, a lot of us are eating more and more all the time. There's several reasons for this. There's the increased availability of food service establishments. For example, you drive down the street now and you see a McDonald's or a Burger King every other corner. It's right there in your face, so you get tempted to go to these places. We have access to a larger variety of foods now than several years ago, there's larger portions. For example, when you go to a restaurant, if they gave you a plate that only had one little piece of lettuce and a little piece of protein, a little piece of chicken, you would probably say, where's, where's the rest of my food? I'm, I paid $30 for this plate? No. For example, you might go to the Cheesecake Factory. Portion size there is about this size. It's huge. And most people can sit there and eat the whole thing. That's probably enough for about three people. Um, another problem that we're facing is we sit more and we move less. So most of the stuff now we could do in front of a screen or even from our phones. I can just sit here and answer emails or in front of my screen versus walking over to my colleague's office and asking them a question. So we're sitting in front of a screen all day, sitting in front of a computer, not moving around. So we're expending less calories and consuming more calories. And there's some research that has shown that the caloric consumption since 1985 has increased by 300 calories per day. Now, the last presentation, we spoke about obesity and the rate of obesity. It's alarming. Right now, it's 65% of U.S. adults are overweight or obese. Um, when we're talking about obesity, specifically here in Miami, in particular, it's important to look at the Hispanic and African-American population and also include physical activity. Most of us don't have enough physical activity. That's why I'm going to start going over the importance of physical activity. Now, 
there's three pieces of the puzzle in order to maintain healthy weight or lose weight. One is obviously the diet, nutrition, which we've been going over for the past six series. There's also physical activity and there's behavior modification. So um, when we're trying to maintain healthy weight or lose some weight, we should be consuming, how many of you in here try to consume at least three meals a day and then include some snacks in between? A good majority, that's good. What happens when you don't do this, when you just have one big meal in the day? Do you know what, what's occurring in the body when you're doing that? You're slowing down actually your metabolism. The reason why you're slowing it down, you're just having a large meal, you feel satisfied, and then you think you ate so much, you shouldn't eat throughout the, the rest of the day. But what's occurring there is your body has to store all of those nutrients throughout the day, so you're um, res like conserving them, so you're not using them throughout the, the day. It's also important when you're following um, a diet that you eat food that you like versus food that you might go on a specific diet because somebody lost 30 pounds and then you might not be able to stick on it, stick to the diet. Um, it's also important to include whole grains. Um, also, in case of an emergency, always keep some snacks handy. These snacks can be either nuts, fruits, carrots, different type of um, vegetables. That way, when you're a little bit hungry, you don't reach for that brownie or you don't reach for those potato chips. And it's important when you're having these three meals also to Professor Madero talked about portion control. About three-fourths of the plate should be plant-based, like she mentioned. And then only one-fourth should be protein. It's also important, a lot of people in our current wellness center, we get people who come in and they want to weigh themselves. And they're only concerned with the number on the scale. It's not as important the number on the scale. What's more important is your waist size. If we tend to retain the weight, there's, you probably have heard this in the medical field, the apple shape versus the pear shape. The apple shape basically means you're retaining more of the weight in your abdominal region. That increases your risk for heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure. So it's more waist size. When we're measuring your weight, basically for women, we, you want to have 32 and a half inches or less, or men 35 inches or less. You can get a simple uh, measuring tape, or you can come to our facility and we can measure your, your waist. Now, in order to stay satisfied, um, you need, or to lose weight, you need to eat. I just mentioned this. You need to eat on a regular basis. It's recommended that you have about five meals a day. Three would be regular portion size meals and then about two to three snacks. And include some fiber. The reason you want to include fiber in your meal, it keeps you satiated. It keeps you feeling full, basically. Now, when we're talking about physical activity, when you're engaging in physical activity, if it's your first time or you've tried it before, when you try to go at it alone, Sometimes what happens? After a couple of weeks, you're no longer engaging in the physical activity. So it's good to enlist a partner, try to get your partner to motivate each other, have several people that you can contact so you can engage in physical activity. Um, when you're going through this process, whether it's physical activity or nutrition, there's going to be times when you fall off the wagon. But instead of getting discouraged, pick yourself right back up and go right back into that healthy diet or that um, physical activity that you were doing regularly. Um, it's also important to read food labels. When you're reading food labels, you want to have no more than four grams of saturated fat. Professor Madero explained what saturated fat is. It basically comes from animal products. You want to also get enough sleep, about six or seven to eight hours of sleep each night. And you do want to include some fat in your diet, but that needs to come from unsaturated fats, mostly monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. You can get some from a handful of walnuts, basically. Um, the benefits of engaging in physical activity, in particular aerobic and anaerobic, which would be muscular resistance, would be to protect against um, heart attacks, depression, also breast cancer. Um, it builds endurance. It also keeps your heart pumping throughout the day. Um, it boosts your HDL, which is a healthy cholesterol. It helps you control your blood pressure and maintain a healthy bone density. And when we're engaging in cardiorespiratory exercise, which is basically any activity where you have continuous activities of engaging large, large muscle groups, so basically walking, running, climbing stairs, or spinning or cycling, indoor cycling, which we're going to have in our new facility, um, you're basically using oxygen. And that helps reduce the risk of heart disease and um, 
blood pressure, and also it keeps a healthy weight. And then when we're talking about strength training, a lot of times we get, in, in particular, females who sometimes are against strength training because they feel like they're going to get a lot of muscle. That's not necessarily true. By engaging in resistance training and in, in, um, strength training, basically you're increasing your lean body mass. In turn, you're going to increase your metabolism and maintain that healthy weight that you want to maintain or lose some weight. Now, there's different ways to engage in this resistance training. You could either do um, low repetitions, which is basically to um, increase muscle, muscular strength, or you could do high repetitions to increase muscular endurance. And then it's also important to include stretching so we can keep those joints moving regularly. Now I'm basically going to introduce Sanda Giuseppe. She's basically, you could see her certification here. She spent a long time. She spent, I believe, a couple of months in India. She did 200 hours there, and now she's a certified yoga therapy um, instructor. Yes, uh, it, it was an incredible experience. I also learned a lot about Ayurveda cooking, meditation, and uh, in addition to the yoga therapy and different style of meditation and breathing technique. Um, which reminds me what uh, Professor Medeiro and what Daniel have been talking about. If you make changes in your life, do it slowly. That's lesson number one. Don't make drastic changes in your diet. You have to do it slowly. You have to eat whatever you love, but perhaps making some modification, and that's what Ayurveda about. What I did today with my risotto, Italian risotto, I made an intervention. And by me making an intervention, I, I'm doing perhaps a Ayurveda cooking. Why? Because I'm using wild rice instead of uh, the risotto rice that we use as like pearls. So that's Ayurveda. You make small intervention and little by little you get adjusted to new way of cooking and a new way of lifestyle. Um, in India, they don't uh, suffer that much of obesity because they don't eat red meat that much. Um, I would say that over 60% are uh, vegetarians, and those that eat meat is white meat and very small portion. Every time they serve a dish, the majority are, you see a good portion of rice, right? Wild rice, and then a little bit of vegetables and a little bit of meat, if they eat meat, and a little bit of soup, that's it. But that's the middle meal. So that is very important. So let's go back to my risotto alle carote, carrots risotto. Uh, it's very simple. So I, uh, for four people, I used two cups of multigrain rice, two cups of slide carrots, which is a lot, uh, one stick of unsalted butter, half onion, a glove of garlic, one tablespoon of olive oil, a tablespoon of uh, parsley, and a liter of a vegetable broth, which you can do it yourself or buy already done, and um, two tablespoons of grated uh, parmesan and mozzarella, and a little bit of sea salt. Although in India they use mountain salt, this is something new I learned, they have this uh, salt from Malaysia, from Malaysia, salt, and they say it's excellent for those that suffer from high blood pressure. So something that you may want to remember. So what I did basically, I saute the carrots with, with the butter, with half of the butter that you see there, and then on a different pan, I saute the remaining um, garlic and onion, and I put it to the, the rice, Done almost like Latin style. You, you saute the, the, the garlic and the onion and the rice. And then you, you put the water, which is twice as the amount of the rice, correct? And when the water is basically all absorbed, you add the carrots, you mix it, you cover it, and you leave on very low heat for about 20 minutes. Now, when it's multigrain rice, it takes longer time. So it's good, it's crunchy, it's tasty, uh, I love it, and I'm sure you're going to like it. So any question you may have regarding this recipe, you may contact me or Daniel, and I will be very happy 
to help you with that. Now, because I did the last time, in this time I was asked, why don't you do something before we eat? I will uh, do a technique I learned in India. So I want everybody to rub the hands and make a nice cup and cover gently your eyes. And breathe in very deeply. Retain and exhale. Take your hands off. Bling, 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 bling. Look up and down, up and down, up and down. Don't move your head, just your eyes. Your eyes up and down, up and down. And rub your hands again. This is excellent exercise for your eyes because you're in the computer all day. And cover your eyes gently. <coughs> Inhale, retain, exhale. Take your hands off. Blink, 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 blink. Sidewise, so you look right and left, right and left, right and left, right and left, right and, left and let's Move um, backwards, left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. Rub your hands again. Cover your eyes very gently. Inhale. Retain and exhale. Put your hands down, bling, 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 bling. And now look up at 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, and reverse, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6. Rub your hands again. Cover your eyes. And inhale very deeply. Retain. And exhale. Take your hands off, bling, 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 bling. And now just inhale and exhale. Close your eyes. Inhale. Retain and exhale. Inhale. Retain and exhale. Very good. It is very important that before we eat, we are in a very peaceful state of mind. Our thoughts are to be focused on what we're going to eat and really enjoy and not think about other things. It's like almost a meditation. That's the only way you're going to get all the vitamins that you need to get, all, all, all the nutrients that you get from your food is from you focusing and concentrate on what you eat and really enjoy it very slowly, okay? That being said, thank you so much and we proceed to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions? Thank you, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. This program is brought to you by Miami Culinary Institute at Miami-Dade College. For more information about the schools and the culinarium program, please visit www.miamidadeculinary.com or call 305-237-3276.